Hello, I welcome you to Excitement 2. I will be going through this game with lots of kinds of criticism. So, I found this game on the recent download section at RMN and I thought it looked interesting. So, I decided I want to go through it and see if I can find any errors and show them to the developers so we can improve the game. Very simple. And uh, this will be my weekly video. I'm going to try to upload at least one video a week along with my other projects, my own RPG Maker game and whatnot, and hopefully I can get around to some other projects. I might open up a form so people can request games and whatnot, but for now, I will start working on this one, since it's right here in front of me. Okay, so I'm in a really good mood today. Let us hope this game has what I like, has what I need. Oh, and one interesting thing is the title screen changes color every time I switch it up. One problem with the background though, you can see the picture. You can see it rotating itself and or, or repeating itself. That light is very noticeable. Probably a bit difficult for you to fix it if you don't know how to use Photoshop, but still. I like this though. This is really cool. Really nice, I like that. Though I wish that color would change along with the title screen color, but whatever. Okay, well, I'm probably going to use Challenging because I, I play a lot of RPGs, so yeah. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I should note that I haven't played Incitement 1, by the way, so I'm going into this really blind. The G is going off of the message screen, which looks a bit awkward. The ground tile doesn't really mesh well with the road to a certain extent. It's very, very blocky. Other than that, the mapping has been pretty good so far. I'm enjoying this cutscene. Okay, so after the intro, I was going through the cutscene right here, and during the moment where I was training, I believe, with a woman, I think it was her, I was supposed to be in this place for about two weeks, and it showed my character doing a whole bunch of exercises and whatnot. After that whole little cutscene of him shooting a robot, it faded out, faded back in, and I got a Q's lighting effect error. So the lighting script you're using, I think his name is Q's, Q-U-A, or K-U-A, yes. It's a very weird script. A lot of games use it, and a lot of games crash with, by using it, because it's very, I, I don't know how to say this, it's uh, volatile, I guess you could say. So you want to be careful with that script, it can be, it can bug out quite a lot. And it's kind of random too, so it's a bit of a bitch. I'm gonna see if it'll pop up this time. This might take a while, I'm gonna skip. There are a lot of good animations though. Okay, here we go. Please don't crash. Okay, it didn't crash. Just wanna make sure. But yeah, it did crash the last time. Good sound effects. They fit the game. Oh, it's nice to see a mission script. No description or stats of this item. I would like to know uh, what this item is. I know it's a gun, but I would like some lore on it, or at least tell me the stats up on the description box so it is blank and taking up space. Same thing for the life suit. 20% base chance to cause the burn state? That's really little. So, unless enemies are deliberately weak to the burn state and it works higher on them, that seems pretty useless. Compare and contrast to multi-shot which is a three strike compared to a one strike. So either this is stronger than this spell, or what? I like the atmosphere in this place though. Very nice transition. I like that. Very smooth. You couldn't name this anything a little bit more, I don't know, original? I mean, this is a sci-fi setting. You could use something a little bit more techy. All right, my characters are now level three. Instant CPR, that sounds interesting. And, uh, yeah, like I like I said, the, the burning effect, kind of useless, because not only does it cost more than my attack that does a lot more damage than it, well it doesn't do a lot more, but it does about the same, but the 20% chance to burn is just really, really low, and I expect bosses to have a lower chance of it even working, so I'm like, okay, well, I'm never going to use that ability as a player, because I don't see how it's useful, it's definitely not useful on the my, on the guys I was fighting beforehand. Maybe make the soldiers weak to it, or just say it burns people and don't give it don't give a number. 
or if you want to give a number higher to like 70% base chance so I know it will almost always work because I know burn is like a poison and poisons usually don't work on bosses to a certain extent and if you want a skill like that to be useful you really gotta you really gotta throw it in the player's face in my opinion I like how the game always gives me a safe option during cutscenes. Odd, odd sense and structure for a robot. Why can't I talk this good? Kind of odd how an item that removes burn effects is more expensive than an item that restores magic. The spell only improve only the item that costs less than one item that can remove a burn state recovers 50 MP. I should mention right now that the game is very spam heavy. There isn't a whole lot of reason to use skills in this game. You might want to fix that. It's mostly because I don't have a whole lot of money, so I, so the player and me in extension don't want to use a lot of my skills. You really want to make the player use skills a bit more often, because when the player is just spamming normal attacks, the, board, the battles are pretty boring. That isn't saying that I'm not having fun with the game though, the game is pretty fun at the, at the moment, and the mapping is pretty good, it just it could be a lot better. I also like the transition. Creative. You make a flash, switch, and then all the characters appear behind me. I like it very fast, very simple and elegant. It also doesn't take as much effort compared to other ways of making the characters show up for cutscenes. I wish you gave me a save prompt when I was about to enter this battle. I didn't know this battle was going to pop up when I entered the room, and you've been giving me a lot of save points during cutscenes, so why not give me a it's dangerous to go ahead, maybe I should save type of prompt. This skill doesn't really seem that useful. I mean, 25% chance to crit? Yeah, that's okay, but critting doesn't do that much damage. Yeah, it lasts for 4 turns, but it also decreases my agility. And I know agility is pretty optional with a lot of fights, it may not be that useful, but meh. And the 1% is just completely stupid. I mean, okay, 5%, that's pushing it. 10%, that's great. But 1% just sounds lame. The devil voice is pretty good, though. Would you look at that? More party members. Awesome. I honestly wasn't expecting to get so many of them, to be honest. I mean, I'm usually a man that likes to make only, like, four characters and make them useful and have a whole bunch of them, but I'm not really complaining because I like variety and I like choosing different characters, especially if their skills were a little bit more useful for the bosses. Uh, though I do really like her abilities, I'm always using her skills, but she's the only character with, with skills that are remotely useful in this game. Also, treat burns. Now, I got an item. I think I already proposed this. There is an item I had that removes burns, and I removed it from my inventory thinking that this would remove burns too, but unfortunately it didn't. But this does, of course, obviously. And that proves my point that the item that removed burns, since it was ex more expensive than the item that restores 50 MP, it is now completely useless. I mean, yeah, she could die, but it's burns. I doubt she'll die. And I think she's the fastest character in my party. No, she isn't the fastest. She's close, though. So, if she can't pull it off... ...a healing spell, I can just focus on him, because he'll, he'll be able to use an item and heal somebody up if she has to focus on treating burns and whatnot. What I would do is lower the price of that item that removes burns, because it is just, it's just ridiculously expensive. Well, you might be in my party. What the hell is your fetish with 25% base chances? Oh, now this is an ability I would love to have, like, from the beginning of the game. Because if I can know the enemy's weaknesses, that automatically makes a lot of the 25% base chance bullshit useful. If that increases the chance for status elements to work, of course. So she'll be in my party too. So much for the blue dudes. Because seriously, why would I ever remove my medic? She is amazing. She is my bestie. I might remove my main character if I could though. Faceless? Oh really? No. No. How much does that even- that does nothing to his- that does nothing to his armor? Wow, that's kind of weird, but never mind. Oh, a nice panel back there. I like that. Good job. Hell yeah. Hells to the yeah. And there are also cars on the road, too. Kill me! I'm too good for this sinful earth! I am a bad person! Okay. Whoa. Whoa, that's- Whoa, 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 what happens? What happens? Okay, where's my main character? Alright. Alright. 
there, right. edit, hey, all right, all right, there we go. Okay, that kind of scared me for a second there. I don't even know what was going on. Uh, I shouldn't be able to do this. I don't think you can fix that though. It is kind of awkward. Oh well, large events like that are kind of hard to code correctly. If at all, I mean, you would have to you would have to make like three events that are like on this car at the same time. Like you would have to have an event behind it so the player doesn't. So the player can't get in and right in front of it so the player can't be ran over by the car. Or something of that sort. But I don't know. This is a really cool map though. Why are you teleporting me on the teleporter? Like why not teleport me right here? So it's easier to run back onto this map instead of being so awkward that I run straight into the edge like this. I would like a description of these items. I mean, I would like some more information than fire shield, plasma shield, acid shield, because I don't know what that shit does. And it's expensive too. I'm not made of money at this point. $20 for a drink? I don't even know what it does. That's pretty expensive. I mean, like, 10 more and I can buy a freaking medical pack. I mean, seriously, who pays $20 for a can of soda? Oh, this is kind of nifty. I like how the first side quest I get all take me to one area and because it's so simple it makes the player want to do more of the side quests because it rewards pretty well did this guy really think he could take on six armed soldiers the balls i swear the balls but besides that when he got killed the game told me he got the status element death so i'm like okay that's cool and all but why is his valor not going away if he died quote unquote you might want to change the, the thing from death to incapacitated or something that's a little bit more ambiguous of what happened to them because stuff like this will happen and it kind of breaks immersion to a certain extent very to a certain extent not not a whole lot but if you think about it too much it's kind of weird not to mention the fact that a lot of the enemies i'm fighting are robots so when i kill them i'm not really killing them i'm destroying them i mean from the dialogue of a lot of the robots, I can assume that most of them are sentient, but, or at least somewhat sentient, but the problem is that you haven't really explained that yet. I mean, I can kind of see it, but at the same time, it's a little bit ambiguous. Kind of odd how she wouldn't mention the guy had brown skin. Not that many people have brown skin. There are there are several people, but most of them are white or alien. You're getting kind of lazy with these descriptions, dude. I mean, I know it's redundant, but... It looks better than an empty description box, it really does. Entering this place also has a random chance of screwing up my game, crashing it. I don't know what light effect does that though. This room does lag a little bit though, I gotta I kinda say, it's uh, kind of weird. Yeah, the, the, the Q's awesome light effect script is very 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 volatile and not only that if you if you use it in an awkward way and by using an awkward way i mean use it too much add too many light effects the game starts lagging so it's a very it's a very uh weird script you might want to look into using a little bit of overlays to insinuate light effects or something of that sort because overlays don't take up a whole lot of memory Probably a bit more complicated, or a lot more complicated, but it's a lot better for a game compared to that script, in my opinion. You don't have to fix that, but you definitely want to do something about the crashes. You don't want someone entering a room that has light effects and having a 50-50 chance of crashing. I would give it the first person who can tell me what this item does a cookie who isn't the developer, of course. I mean, seriously, I've tried this on. It does nothing to my stats and there's no description. I like how when the sprites move, it seems as though some of the sprites aren't walking in a box. Like, if you don't know what it is to non-RPG maker developers, I don't even know why you're watching this video by the way, but whatever. There are boxes that the characters walk on and you can ch choose movement events that makes the character walk in certain boxes into other boxes. And the sprites that the creator made or whatever, walk as though they're not really following that box format they look like they're just free roaming to a certain extent so one character is on one side and one character is slightly to the bat bottom or the right or the left or whatnot and it makes and it, and it just looks really nice because it doesn't seem as though everyone is walking in a box format i don't know if that's a script or you 
made the sprites to do that, but it's a nice effect and I like it. Well, this sounds rather interesting. I mean, I guess you could say that it's an extra heal if you run out of items, but it's pretty sketchy, dude. Map glitch. The first map glitch in this game. Mind you, this game uses absolutely no RTP. So the fact that I found only one map glitch is a pretty nice respect among the creator because I usually find a whole lot of them in games like this. And by no RTP, I mean no RTP in the mapping. This is a, a paid for futuristic map set if someone was wondering. So he paid like about $20, $30 for this and he had to implement it himself. Oh, this is pretty interesting. Huh. Fancy. I like how I have a choice between either intelligence or magic defense. Oh man, dude. You are lucky I am in a good mood today because holy shit. Alright, this is the third fucking crash that happened because of the Q's awesome light effects goddamn script. I hate that script. I really do. At this point. Okay, does it work? Thank god. Alright. You're gonna have to do something about that, dude. You really do. Oh, I forgot about that. Yay. I like the first hub in this game. Well, it's the second hub, technically, but I like all the side quests, and I, I enjoy exploring it. Good job. So hopefully, I'll be able to go back in the future. I hope I don't regret complimenting the developer on the lack of mapping errors in this game. I must say, I'm not a fan of random battles, but I respect the fact that they're not annoying in this game. Well, this is pretty fun. Well, pretty interesting. I haven't played it a whole lot, so I can't say if it's fun or not. No! guys can't keep up with my ninja speed. Okay, that was pretty fun. That was a pretty simple and fun little mini game right there. It's a good job. It isn't annoying. I know a lot of hacky games <laughs> like Bioshock were just kind of irritating, so I'm glad that one isn't. Oh, I can switch my party in battle. Hey. Let me try that off real quick. What is the cooldown, by the way? I'm really curious. I don't think the game will ever tell me. And that's kind of important. I would like I would like there to be a small tutorial on that or some sort. But I don't know, this game hasn't really been giving me tutorials. Please note that I'm an experienced RPG maker player and maker to a certain extent. I haven't really made a game. Well, I've made games, but I haven't really made anything of note. I just know what RPG maker is enough to give feedback and whatnot. So with that said, I know what the fuck I'm doing with most of these games that are RPGs, of course. But a lot of players won't, so you want to be careful about that. Anyway, I'm going to try this out. I'm probably going to immediately regret it because she has no equipment, but whatever. Alright. I would like to know what the cooldown is. I, I usually use 10, because if you, if you put the cooldown too low, it can kind of screw things up. Because, you know, it, it would kind of make things a little bit cheap. Anyway, now that I figured that out, I'll have to give her some equipment again, because why not? Nice. First ammo replenishment in this game. Awesome. Because for a second there I thought I always had to make sure I didn't use ammo or had to conserve it because I thought for a second that, that they, those things didn't exist. Also that waterfall to the top of the screen has no waterfall animation. What the fuck is up with developers forgetting to add a waterfall animation? Is it because it's blue? You can, you can change the color. Hell, if you want to PM me, I can change the color of the waterfall from blue to green if you really want. It isn't that hard if you have GIMP or Photoshop. Whatever. Oh, this just lowers their defense by 25%. Fuck. I thought it told me their status elements and whatnot, you know what I mean? I didn't know Enku was using physical attacks, quote-unquote. He shoots lightning during his normal attacks, I'll show you. See, he's using can- oh wait, no, that's I am. Yeah, there we go. Either that's some sort of punch that's lightning focused, but it really doesn't look like it. When I used this ability, I believe it removed my frost debuff. I don't know if that was supposed to happen or not, but you might want to check that. Because if it does, you have to tell me it removes frost, uh, whatever the frost state he inflicts on me. That was a fun boss. Alright, I am done with the demo. Okay, that was a pretty promising boss fight at the end. Unfortunately, I don't know what those skills I just learned do. Oh well. Okay, well, this is probably the first game I played that actually implemented the party system that allows you to switch your party in battle. I don't really say that a whole lot. I've used it in my game, and it definitely adds a whole new layer of strategy 
when you have standby party members. Kind of like Final Fantasy X. Very nice. Okay, so... My main problem comes into gameplay, and it's actually not a huge problem, but you want to make sure the player doesn't spam normal attacks as much as I was. Now, with that said, the, boss, the, the normal enemies went by quickly. I dispatched them with ease. The problem is that the animations are a bit slow for my taste. You can you can speed them up with Yinfly's Ace Core engine because her her script has a animation thing that allows you to make the animations about uh, 1.5 times faster to a certain extent, and that makes the battles move faster, which by by definition will make the battles fun, or at least a little bit more fun, because I don't really give a fuck about what the animations look like to a certain extent. And basically, most of the normal fights in this game amount to me spamming normal attack because I don't want to use ammo. The way to fix that is to give the player some more money to start off with. Or if you don't want to give the player money, you can just give me more ammo. Or, better yet, or you can do this in conjunction with, you would like to also... my memory. You would also like to make some of the skills a bit more useful. Now, this is the tricky part, and it's the part I don't like. A lot of the skills are not very useful. Bird states, that, that bird states confusion states, that have a 25% chance of working. I don't even know if that shit works on bosses, because I don't want to use it, because the 25% chance is bullshit. I would basically have to spam that like five times and then give up for me to get any type of real scientific answer to it. I was hoping that that scan ability would actually tell me weaknesses of the enemy. Unfortunately it doesn't happen. You would you would want to consider looking into a proper scan ability. And by a proper scan ability I mean ability that when cast this is complicated, but when you cast it on say a boss, you can probably do this on only bosses, because then normal enemies really don't matter to a certain extent. It takes a common it basically puts on a switch. You have to activate a common event from that skill. This common event will put on a switch. This switch will activate a event in the troops section of the RPG Maker that will allow you to write some dialogue. Now, what you want to do is, for every monster that has a specific weakness, you want to write down that weakness to the player and if you want to give it like a time limit, say use the skill, it activates the switch, and then after that, it gives you a prompt that says, give me one second while I scan the enemy, and then it takes another turn after that or something, and then after that other turn, the information comes by, but that's optional. What I care about is the information. Does poison work on that bitch? Does scan work on that bitch? Does... I mean, not scan, does burn work on that bitch, or anything that is elemental. There is no there is no elemental strategies in this game. I'm not using fire on ice enemies, I'm not using thunder on water enemies or some shit. There's none of that, and it's kind of boring. With that said, the battles are very good. I'm not, I, was never, I was never that bored with the fights, though some of the bosses were kind of... Well, the two bosses I fought... fought they lasted for a bit of time. Now that isn't bad per se. I actually kind of got nervous that I would run out of items, which is good. But the problem is that it was just it just felt slow and boring. That's also due to the animations being slow and boring. If you want to speed up the animation, you can. I know some people don't like that. I know it makes my game a lot more fun, and it makes me have a lot more fun with RPG Mode games. Now, if you want some tips on how to, or you want some inspiration on how to design good battles, I made a video on the game called Lady and the Lion. You might want to check out that game. You don't really need to watch my video, but you can check out that game and uh, play it a little bit. It has some really good gameplay, and I actually use skills in that game enough, enough to enough to the point where the normal attack isn't the go here for everything type of thing. I, I, I just don't want to spam normal attacks 70% of the game. Even in boss battles I'm spamming a lot of normal attacks. Well not really normal attacks, in boss battles I'm spamming my most powerful skill and that's and that's not really that better, I mean come on. So yeah you want to be a little bit a little bit more careful. You want to try to work in a rotation like 
people use different abilities every once in a while. I mean, the healer always has something to do. I, I like how the healer always has to heal on this game. Very nice. I would like some more complications, though, later on, maybe. Stronger heals, weaker heals, in-between heals, heals that are instant, heals that give buffs, stuff like that. You have to add more rotations to skills, so I'm not spamming one skill all the time. It's not very good design, and if that happens at end game, that you're bad. But whatever. So storyline, well, I didn't play the first game, and with that said, I I, I, I quite enjoy this story. I mean, it's sci-fi. A lot of games don't do that. A lot of games don't use the the futuristic tile set at the moment, and you use it very well. I like your mapping, very nice. There are two errors that you need to fix, which isn't a bad for a demo like this. And you really, really, really want to fix the Q's awesome light effects errors. I got three fucking crashes, and two of those crashes made me have to run back about 10 minutes. So, yeah. With that said, this is a, ver this is a pretty promising demo. I like it. I love the title screen. <laughs> but yes, I, I definitely subscribe and I'll follow this game. Don't know if I'll play the full game at the moment, but we'll see. I I probably will. I don't know if I'll record it though, because there are so many things that I do want to record. Anyways, if you want me to play your game like you literally want me to do some credit critiques on a new installment, well, I don't want to do any more demos. Once I play a game that's demo, I don't want to play another demo version of it. I want to get to the full game. So if you want me to play it, you can PM me and I'll think, and I'll look into it. But yeah, I'll definitely start following this. Anyways, thank you for watching. Goodbye, good luck. I hope this helps.